Good morning and welcome to the Forex Daily Update, brought to you by Pepperstone on Thursday the 23rd of August 2018. I'm Darren Sindon and you can follow me throughout the day on Twitter by using at DS underscore Pepperstone. Right, let's take a look at the overnight changes and price moves to be aware of. And it's an about face once more uh, from FX majors, the Euro, Sterling, the Aussie Dollar and the New Zealand Dollar all giving ground uh, against uh, the US currency, as have the Canadian and Mexican uh, national currencies. Uh, we'll look at some of the reasons behind those moves in a moment. Be aware that we are expecting some news today, though, uh, about NAFTA negotiations, or at least those were the rumours, and that could explain some of the movements in Canada and Mexico. Dollar index for its part, a little bit firmer overnight, 95.42, uh, trading shortly before we recorded the video, and that's up by around 0.29% uh, in the last 24 hours. OK, it puts on the calendar <coughs> events that may move the markets, excuse me. A fairly busy calendar today. And the first thing to point out to you is that we have the start of the Jackson Hole Symposium in Wyoming, USA, a uh, gathering of central bankers, uh, leading businessmen and politicians. We've already had leading economic and coincident index data out of Japan. Uh, so somewhat disappointing, uh, but as we'll see, those figures have been uh, balanced out, shall we say, by some better than expected PMI numbers. Speaking of PMIs, at 7.30 a.m. GMT this morning, we will have composite services and manufacturing PMI data out of Germany for the month of August. These are, of course, preliminary reads, and that'll be followed half an hour later at 8 a.m by similar data for the Eurozone. Again, that's manufacturing services and composite PMI preliminary reads there. At 11.30, we'll also have the release of the ECB monetary policy meeting accounts. And then we jump across the Atlantic at 12.30 for continuing jobless claims and initial jobless claims uh, for the weeks of August 10th and August 17th, respectively. 1300 sees the release of house price index data uh, out of the US for the month of June and then at 1345 we'll have services composite uh, PMI data preliminary reads again for the month of August out of the USA. We knew home sales data for July at 1400 out of the states and then uh, quite a decent break until 2245 when we flip round to the opposite side of the world for trade balance data for July out of New Zealand. And then at 23.30 to round the day off, uh, <coughs> national CPI and consumer price index data out of Japan for the month of July. Okay then, breaking news and comment that's caught my eye overnight. First of all, uh, the Federal Reserve minutes from its last meeting reveal concern about the bank's ability to fight a future recession. But they also show that rates are likely to rise near term as the US economy continues to grow. Meanwhile, switching to Asia-Pacific, Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull's position looks increasingly fragile and the country's parliament has been suspended in the hopes of resolving the Liberal Party leadership crisis and he is facing an increasing threat to his role both as party leader and as the country's Prime Minister. Uh, and those two items there really help to explain some of the moves we saw in the uh, mo Daily Movers chart. Uh, the Aussie dollar is significantly weaker, uh, both on the back of uh, likely higher US interest rates and this domestic political turmoil. Staying in Asia Pacific, Japan's flash manufacturing PMI showed modest gains of plus 0.2% in August with a read of 52.5 versus July's 52.3 uh, reading. And uh, staying in, in Southeast Asia, at least Thai unemployment has fallen to 1% uh, in July, down from 1.2% in June. Now that does sound uh, quite amazing, doesn't it? But it is still above its record low of just 0.39%, which was seen in November 2012. And uh, that low unemployment rate must be the envy of many a developed nation. Okay then, food for thought, something to take away with you into the trading day and beyond. But well, why not think about this? Despite Brexit concerns, new data from Thomson Reuters shows that London remains a dominant force in global FX trading. In fact, average daily FX volumes traded in London have risen by 23% since April 2016 to stand an impressive 2.7 trillion per day today, far eclipsing New York's 994 uh, billion turnover, which itself was up 11% from uh, April 2016. Now, the chart on the right here just shows you the uh, uh, the 
the emergence of London as a dominant force in global FX and its continued rise. Um, New York is still growing, but at a much slow, slower in kind, and the Asian centres uh, are growing too, but again, uh, even shallower than New York. Right, please take a moment to read the risk warning. Trading CFDs and foreign exchange on margin can be a risky business. If you're in any doubt about those risks or the suitability of trading on margin using leverage products, <clears throat> then please do contact your Pepperstone account representative and please do take a moment to read this risk warning.